Hello everyone and welcome to a, a new episode of the Darts Around the Globe podcast. Today we are virtually traveling to another interesting country, a very interesting uh, country according to me. It's Bahrain and uh, we're calling with uh, the number one on the national ranking rankings. It's uh, Fatih Sulaibek. Hello everyone, my name is Fatih Sulaibek. I'm from Bahrain and I'm talking to you through Darts Around the Globe. Fatih, uh, how are you doing today? Hey, hi Pam, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. <laughs> um, excellent, excellent. Let's, uh, let's get into, uh, into the darts of uh, Bahrain. Um, like uh, this year, it, it got uh, announced to the bigger public as one of the qualifiers of the Asian Championship. Before that, I, I assume most people didn't know that people actually played darts in, in your country. Um, can you tell us something about how you picked up your first darts, how you started to play? And got interested in the sport. Sure, I'll do that. Uh, first of all, allow me to uh, say one thing. So, unfortunately, Pam, uh, the game or the dart sports and and didn't get much of attention in our local media, and that's why it didn't spread very well. But however, we have more than 250 players, wow. Bahraini local ones, of course. Uh, uh, so far, the register on the federations 110. Most of the players did not appear, unfortunately, due to many reasons. Maybe the job, because they are most of them, they are shift workers, or a family, or disappointments with the federation earlier. Uh, sad to say that, but that's the fact. Mm. How did I start? It's back to 1997, uh, when I've been joining a friends of mine. They are uh, most of them dirty players. Uh, I was a crew. That at time and uh, a crew is a cabin crew in the airline so uh, in fact this job has given me a good opportunity to see the whole world for free and nice. uh, most the whole world but uh, most of it <laughs> so i've been traveling to europe uh, far east uh, middle east everywhere so i've been seeing those games has been practiced uh, more than anywhere else in europe especially and far east so when i get back to bahrain i've been joining a friends of mine for their tournaments or championships and I noticed that game is really interesting game, a uh, very, very nice game. It's gathering the people. Uh, they make, you can make a friendships out of it and uh, you can practice it whenever you want. So that's my passion started here. I purchased my first dart in 1998. Uh, it was phase three or phase two, if I'm not remember, Spell Taylor, the mm -hmm. world champion. And that, there where it started, uh, and I'm good in calculation, so I purchased only a dart, and then I noticed I need a board, and then, <laughs> so yeah, that's how it started, but it was very interesting, and still I remember the first dart, I lost it. <laughs> well, that is a very uh, good story for sure. Um, if we're talking about darts in, in Bahrain right now, um, I do believe there is, there, well, you, you just said it, that there is a dart uh, association, the Bahrain Dart Association. Um, what do they do? Do they organize national rankings or, or how do they organize the darts in, in your country? Yes, sir. Actually, uh, we have a federation. It's uh, combined after the COVID-19 uh, corona pandemic. Uh, everything's freezed, to be honest. We started our federation in 19 and 2018. Mm -hmm. But uh, in, Later on, everything stopped and freeze and postponed due to due to the Corona, of course, pandemic. Uh, His Majesty the King uh, paid more attention to the individual sports because most Bahrain is like one of the any other countries. They focused on football, basketball, and uh, those teams uh, games. Yeah. The individual games have been ignored, unfortunately, and uh, the the King. Uh, God bless him. He, he noticed that there is something missing here. We need to check and see at the individual games and pay them some attention. So he delegated to the Minister of Youth and Sports to focus on those games such as uh, billiards, knockers, darts, mm -hmm. uh, any athletics games. So yes, we did achieve a lot of things. Thanks God and uh, His Majesty the King. He paid a lot of attention for it and the support. So here where we started our federation in 2018 and uh, we, we stopped for two years unfortunately as everywhere else yeah and then we are back to business and we started now in 2022 our first uh, ranking uh, tournament 
and I managed to claim it. And uh, we continue to do this for three times in a year. That means a quarter every four months in order to uh, classify and to, uh, in order to rank the players. Mm -hmm. So this is a very good point. I think this is a BDC requirement as well, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah, let, let's talk about the, the whole ranking system uh, a little bit after this. I'm, I'm just interested in the, the way um, the king of your country uh, supports darts. Is that, do I just have to see it as they, they give you a certain amount of subsidy, a certain amount of money to organize tournaments? Or, or in what way did, the, did he uh, support uh, individual sports such, a, uh, such as darts? Yeah, in fact, the king he didn't focus on darts only in any individual games, mm -hmm. uh, like a squash, uh, snookers, billiard, darts is one of them. So he delegated the, to the minister to focus on those individual games. Let's focus in the states of everything, like we give attention to football or basketball or volleyball or handball. Let's see those individuals and uh, let's see how can we achieve or develop these games. So there is a budget comes to the uh, to, to the ministry mm -hmm. of uh, sport youth and sports so they, they, they divided according to the you know the popularity the popularity uh, how, how did this, this game starts and how did the end and uh, how long it will take so we take a little budget but so far it's enough for us for 110 players I think it's it's fair enough so far. But we are expecting actually more, and they will notice that we need more after that. Mm -hmm. How many players did you uh, have in the last, well, in, in the first ranking of, of this year? Uh, the registered one BM is 110 out of 250 players. Uh, unfortunately, most of them, they refused to participate due to either uh, family commitments or works, as they are shift workers, or mm -hmm. due to the disappointments earlier with the Federation uh, started uh, before that so 110 is registered so far 110 players of course all all of them are locals uh, of course we we, we do have uh, another communities uh, you know uh, uh, like uh, Filipinos English uh, mm -hmm. uh, Indians uh, they are all con considered as what uh, expatriates but they are like friends and families with us as well. Bahrain is a very small country, and that's why this darts sports gives us the opportunities to meet and together and to social with all, all of us together in one place or another place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I believe that the place where the rankings are held are is the, the Buffalo Wings and Rings, like a, a restaurant, which is quite, well, not, not funny, but interesting to me because um, like back here in Europe, the most tournaments are held either in a you know, big space or, or in a in in a bar. Obviously, the most leagues are in bars. Um, is that in in Bahrain a, a little different? I assume since it's uh, like a majority Islamic country where people usually don't drink. Well, uh, Bam, let me clear one point. Actually, Bahrain is a free country. It's an open country. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, wings and Rings, uh, Buffalo Wings and Rings is a restaurant, and it was its own sponsorship has nothing to do with the federation federation yeah. is restricted place and it's a clubs it should be in clubs without any alcohol or smokes or any food or beverage to be served in the hall so we follow the bdc literally uh, words and rules and regulation on this issue so buffalo is, is a different uh, different place it is a bar actually it is one of the five stars hotels or bars a restaurant and they serve a lot of nice foods actually to be honest with you <laughs> and the drinks is reasonable and most of the guys you can you can go there you, you can go there and you don't have to drink to be honest it, it, I, after all it's a free country after as i mentioned earlier you yeah, don't have it, to drink to play but yeah, it, yeah. It, it's it's so interesting to, to me because i i i totally agree with uh i mean if you look at the, the pdc tour there, there's so much alcohol on on that tour. It's it's unbelievable. So it's it's interesting exactly. to see to see countries like Bahrain who actually do very well in in at least their like uh, you know national rankings and and not not serving it uh, alcohol. I I agree with that. But then um, as you said, other tournaments are played in, for example, like uh, commercial places as that uh, um, wings place. Um, 
what other darts is played besides the rankings? Are there is there a national league like a, a weekly competition going on? There is another one, but is un, unfortunately it's not really official ones. Mm. However, uh, before before the federations, we've been managing to conduct some tournaments and championships that last for a few days or even some months. Now the one is running sh the running the show is a friend of mine called Arif Murad. He have the whole statistics and numbers and uh, performance for each and individual players, and he done very hard works to achieve that. To be honest. We appreciate his works. Uh, those we call it as a local ones. Local tournament it takes uh, six months, continuous six months. It's home and away, and uh, the participants are more than uh, sixteen uh, team, which is a really uh, cool. interesting ones. Every Monday they have uh, their uh, tournaments uh, challenges. Is that also the place where you practice uh, your darts most of the time in those local competitions? Earlier, yes. Yes, earlier I did, and uh, after my retirement, so I, I've been focused on uh, more more families issues. So I mean, you know, it's it's home and away. That's I'm living uh, quite far from the city, mm -hmm. so I need to drive every single Mondays there and practice on Sunday. And you know, <laughs> to be honest, it's costly and uh, avoiding those uh, traffic jams now. So yeah, these people are still interesting, and they continue with that. However, I do play individual and from places to another. I visit my friends, I social with them. And there is many places, to be honest, to play darts in Bahrain. Many, many of them. Forget about the bars or the hotels, but there is a plenty of clubs. I will give you an example if you are interested to hear that. Uh, it will be a British club, a rugby club, Dilmon club, Yacht club, uh, another couple of clubs. And uh, of course, they serve alcohol, of course. But yeah. Alba Club, no, they restricted because this is this is the main one and the official ones, which is uh, under the uh, Bahrain uh, Dart Federation's uh, rules and regulation. Mm -hmm. And are these um, <clears throat> like uh, are these local clubs? Are they only focused on on, on the darts? Are, you know, are they just a room with with dartboards, or are they more? Like with pool tables as well, like focus on other things, or are they specifically dart clubs? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Actually, it's it's like international uh, method. You know, the sports is always contains billiard or snooker and darts. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. So yeah, it is it is mix combined with everything. Yeah, so still a, a, a nice place to to go out and and indeed socialize with your friends. Um, let's focus on one one other point. Um, you you used to travel quite a lot. Um, or well, I think you still do by playing darts. One of those places is the um, is Dubai, the United Arab uh, Arabic Emirates. Is yeah. that um, the space to be um, in the Middle East? East, if you're talking about darts. Yeah, well, du Dubai, uh, they, they, they are on the right path. To be honest, now they, they focus on their uh, own uh, federations. Like for example, ours is. Uh, billiard, snooker, and dart federations. Mm. However, Dubai, uh, they, they isolated everything and they kept the federation for darts only. And this is a very good point. Uh, they, they done it really well. I'm expecting even Bahrain, they will follow the same steps and they will isolate the other sports because it's not related, to be honest. So, yeah, at, at least we have something like it's an umbrella. So far, it is umbrella to take us or under it. And we play for uh, Bahrain after all. Dubai, they are doing very well. I've been participating in many uh, tournaments and championships uh, since uh, 2017. Uh, we've been visiting our friends and after all, we are uh, in the Gulf. We are one family and one big family. Mm -hmm. uh, forget about, uh, we have so many things in common, like for, forget about the language or the religion or the traditionals or uh, let's focus on, we have something in common, like with Dubai especially, they focus on dart as well, so we have something better than any other places in the Gulf. Is uh, is, is dart dart's, no. is darts participated in in more countries in the Middle East than the UAE and in uh, in uh, Bahrain, like Qatar, Saudi Arabia? I don't know. Do, do you any do you know know any developments in those countries? As bear my knowledge, Bam, it's uh, unfortunately so far it's in the GCC countries, which is the Gulf Corporation Council, says uh, GCC, six countries, mm -hmm. Bahrain, Dubai, Emirates, uh, Qatar, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and Oman. Uh, so far, we are the only two non-countries 
Bahrain and UAE. But in the Middle East, Middle East is a big region, though. Yeah. It's like, for example, now, now Egypt, considered as a Middle Eastern country, and they have their own federation, and they are ahead of us. It was uh, before us, actually. Lebanese federations, uh, Tunisian, Libyan federations, and very late one is uh, Mauritania's federations now. They have all federation, dark federation, which is very good for the Middle East, to be honest. Interesting to see those developments, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Egypt is, is part of the WDF. I, I, I just read that uh, Bahrain is, like, is a new interim member of the WDF. Do you, what do we have to, uh, what does that mean? Like, is it close to being a member of the WDF um, Federation or, or? Well, actually, yeah, we are very close. Now yeah. we, we had those uh, slots to participate on Tokyo for uh, on, on August. Uh, one, one player or two can, they can, they can join there and uh, play it under the old Dart Federations, of course. So we are known to everyone's now. But as I said earlier, uh, our, our country <laughs> media is not paying any some attention for the game itself. But hopefully, inshallah, soon, yani they, will, they, will, they will know that we will raise our country flags everywhere, inshallah. Mm -hmm. And inshallah, that means we hope that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I know, I know. Um, yeah, well, you, you almost just said it, but how, how do people... Do do people know about the dart sport in Bahrain now? Be, besides the media not covering it, do individuals know that oh, that this is a sport and that they can play it and that they can watch it on TV? Yes, yes. Uh, but Bahrain, uh, they knows the game. They knows, and and now see, not like before. And on back on eighties, there wasn't any you know satellites or uh, you know some channels or links to watch. Now, for example, I'm watching. A Queen Lance Darts Masters in Australia and Melbourne. Yeah, exactly. Uh, be before we used to re uh, rent a cassette, a video cassette to watch <laughs> the, you know, the oldest people, of course, uh, Eric Christos, all uh, Peace Over His Soul, and uh, Phil Taylor, uh, most of those dart players. So we used to learn how to throw, how to stand, how to calculate. Wow. And that was in the 80s. Now, now everything is much easier for everyone. Links. Um, we, we have now the satellites. I, I'm watching now. <laughs> and can you believe all this uh, uh, media is, is in my house? I can see it for free. <laughs> this is the internet. This is the good about the technology, to be honest. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, hopefully. yeah, it, it is actually well, well known in my country. Well known. The game is well known in my country. That's good to hear. Hopefully, it will uh, you know, develop the darts in, in your country even more. Um, one of the, the, the main events uh, of this year in Asia, also because uh, the Asian tour itself is lacking, is the Asian Darts Championship um, with a, a specific qualifier for, for Bahrain, uh, won by Basim Mahmoud Abdullah Mohamed. Uh, I hope I pronounced yeah. it correctly. <laughs> um, what yeah, can you tell is, us yeah. about, about him? He, he's a, actually, he's a good friend of mine. Uh, mm. We are here in Bahrain. Uh, I'm, I'm not disrespecting the others uh, with my all respect to all of them. Uh, they are. A, we have a bunch of nice players and experienced players, seniors and juniors, and I uh, never underestimate any of them. They are a very good dart players. They have this passion, the same one I have on this game and dart. They have those commitments to play and to participate in many places. However, I, I got the chance and opportunities to travel around the world. Uh, unfortunately, maybe not all of them they can do the same but they are very satisfied with the ones they are doing it here in Bahrain or maybe or in the region, like, for example, uh, Dubai. Mm -hmm. But for me, I have been traveling to Middle East, to Europe. I've been in Amsterdam quite times, many times. Nice. I played in Germany. I played in France, in London, in Singapore, and in many, many places, to be honest. But those others, maybe they, they don't have this opportunities to see that for free because the tickets, as you know, is very expensive and <laughs> the accommodation there is very expensive. But for me as an employee, I get these facilities to travel around the world for free, to be honest. Almost free, not really free. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yes, I, I, do, I do that. Basim is one of the good players. Uh, myself and Basim, so far, he's number three. Salah Tomate, he comes actually the second one. Basim was the third. But uh, I'm sure he will wake up now. He will uh, put extra effort to reach uh, better than the third ranks. I'm sure about that. I trust in him. 
and uh, he's younger than me of course he have all this passion and sports more than anybody else believe me and uh, after for me actually after the injuries i have in my shoulders my 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 performance gets slower than before but i'm i'm under treatments now and I'm hopefully i will mm -hmm. be ready for the ranking uh, tournament soon mm -hmm. uh, you did not yeah. participate in in that tournament the, the the qualifier for the asian championship what what was the reason for that in fact i did yeah, i did oh you did and oh. <laughs> uh, yeah as as a rank 1 I, I should be there. I, I have to be in the, you know, in the map. <laughs> so I've been told you I have to participate, not by force, of course. It's just up to me after all. But yes, I said I will, even though I wasn't very good. And I told you after my shoulder injury, it was not very good performance. But I managed to reach the, up to the eighth, which is good enough for me. Not really good, but satisfied my, you know, pride that I've been okay reached to this level. That's good. Uh, I was very surprised to see a, a Bahrain qualifier announced. Uh, I feel like it was announced later than the other qual qualifiers. What, what, what th did something happen between the PDC and and the uh, Bahrain Association, or what is the story behind that? When, when was it announced for you guys that you would have a qualifier for the for the Asian Championship? Because that that is something big for Bahrain too. Yeah. Well, according to my uh, knowledge, to be honest with you, that's uh, it was one month uh, in advance we've been notified about the the Asian qualifi qualified. So one month it's it's a good time, but not e really enough. We need three months for preparation and to get ourselves ready and you know uh, free yourself to be more uh, practicing or have the time to practice and uh, you know to. Uh, just to strengthen your hands, correct something if you have anything wrong with your darts or with your hands. So one month it wasn't very enough to be honest with you. But yes, at least it's been announced and uh, we are happy with that. It's all right. Hopefully for uh, coming years that will be more organized and uh, the notification will be uh, taking more more times. I mm -hmm. hope so. What does uh, Bahrain need to uh, develop itself in darts even more? Uh, Bahrain, as I mentioned earlier, Ben, that's uh, we we have uh, senior players. Uh, they are over 60s, to be honest, and I'm really happy to have those guys around us. Mm -hmm. They are full of experience and talents and skills. I remember one one of the Ben Taylor interview. How did he define the darts? And I remember his words. I, I remember he says, uh, "Dart is 75 percent uh, practice." 20% skills, 5% is luck. Mm -hmm. If one of those elements missing, you will not gonna be anywhere next to the darts. And I really like his way he defined those darts. I think he's right, absolutely right, when he said that. Mm -hmm. What do you he's... think as, as a darts player? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think he's definitely definitely right. Um, if we're, if we're talking about the the, the organization of, of the sport in Bahrain, right now you have, uh, I believe it was uh, three rankings a year. Um, do you, do you think that maybe you would need more tournaments in your country, more official leagues, or or, or like a national team that that goes? abroad representing uh, Bahrain to to develop the darts even more or how do you uh, look at that yeah definitely we need more actually in order to develop anything it's not only darts anything in your life in your social and any aspects you need to practice it more not very often but really more times three mm -hmm. is not enough I believe uh, we need at least let's say I'm not exaggerating but I, I, I follow the, the you know the, the systems here in Bahrain or anywhere else they always talk about budgets. Yeah. They talk about budget and finance and uh, logistics and places. In Bahrain, we, we can do this. We, we just need the support and uh, more financial supports, to be honest, in order to increase the numbers in states of three to make it maybe even six or seven or eight. Why not? People always around, always available, and we respect the rules and regulations being uh, put in by the federation itself, like for for bit, uh, the drinks, alcohol, food and beverage, and everything else. Only tea and water or coffee that will be available, and we respect that. I'm, I'm talking about myself, for example, or maybe other players like in my age or before me either. 
maybe we used to play with with unfortunately that's with alcohol people now the new generation they, they don't focus on that mm -hmm. they just wanted to play as a talent and skills i mean we have a words like it says who needs a depression treatment uh, or physiotherapy uh, when darts is always available <laughs> and it's free you know what i mean those that's are how do i describe the darts yeah no those are some uh, very beautiful words um one more question to to conclude or one of the the last ones um, are there any bigger younger talents in, in bahrain that you think wow this this guy or, or maybe girl definitely has talent and if he or she practices more then maybe um they're going to end up a, a very good player yeah well there, there is a few actually and i don't i don't want to be unfair to some names so i'm not going to mention any names mm -hmm. but yes we have around maybe five to six young players they are even not reached 20 yet or maybe 21 but they are a very good and talented players they just need a little bit push and a practice and mixed with the uh, with the older generation not like myself okay i'm, I'm gonna exclude myself <laughs> but yes there is a good dart players they are seniors they are full of experience and they've gone through this since the late 70s i mean it's plenty of experience they do have mm -hmm. so I, I i'm sure i'm sure one of them or two at least at least i'm very i'm very positive about that that two or three of them they will be they will be something and they will do something here in Bahrain and I'm sure they will be globally known. I hope so. We will see what the, what they will have to offer in the future. It was very interesting to, to hear you uh, talk about Bahrain. Um, we will definitely uh, look at your country with, with more interest and to see what, what's happening and, and going on there uh, for, for darts in the future. Uh, individually, what, what, is, uh, what is your plan for the rest of the year? Are there any bigger tournaments coming up um. yes uh, Bim, yes uh, we do uh, have the second ranks now uh, tournaments it will be last for four days but uh, yeah I think it's very soon they, they send me the the whole uh, papers but I didn't go through it to be honest because it's weekend I, <laughs> and I'm interested in something else but yes there is something coming now soon and Outside, yes, September, I will join uh, Dubai Arab uh, Championship. Mm -hmm. That will be end of September this year. Followed by uh, Thailand Open Darts uh, competitions. That will be championship as well. I'm going to join that as well. And by the way, I joined Thailand in 2019 and I managed to hit the third uh, ranks there, on which is very good. It was a full of good players. BDC ranks players, mm -hmm. and I managed to beat two of them. That means nice. a lot to me, to be honest. <laughs> okay, yeah, it was very, very, very nice to, for me, to be honest. Even though that we played in the morning till midnight, but it was tiring. But yes, that's why I suggest uh, my country they can, you know, uh, develop our our new generation of players by let them travel around the world to see the atmospheres, how is it, uh, to mix with people to make friends, to learn from others, then they're going to get a good players and a new generation of adult players. Those are, uh, those are beautiful words to, to end up uh, this uh, podcast. Uh, thank you, Fatih, and uh, Cheers, good, good luck in the next, uh, well, in the, in the next few years of your uh, darts career. Thank you very much, Mr. Bam. It was very nice talking to you and I really appreciate your uh, uh, considerations and uh, support for us for all and I like your uh, channels and uh, broadcast channels and please if there is anything in you or you want any any more information feel free to contact me I will be always available and I will end up with med dunk is it uh, thank you in <laughs> Dutch is it <laughs> yes yes almost yeah med dunk yeah you can say that <laughs> thank you thank you thank you very much man I appreciate your time though thank you sir